All right, um, welcome back uh, UCS director training sessions. Uh, this is module six. Uh, in this one, I'm going to cover some admin tasks, what um, you're going to do to deploy a VM, uh, as a matter of fact, to organize the catalog for a user. So I think we talked about um, the how the user gets in and deploy the VM in the second session, uh, like um, it logs in the portal and uh, go to the catalog, request a VM, it gets deployed. And how, uh, as an admin, you're going to make that happen. So this is what we're going to cover here. Uh, and this is just focus on the VM environment. No bare metal involved here or no uh, complicated workflow here. It's pretty straightforward. So if you remember that slide I kind of made, uh, the last slide uh, during the uh, VM deployment. Uh, so how does admin does it? Uh, so when um, an admin, VMware admin, kind of, or maybe Hyper-V admin, okay, VMware admin deploys a VM. So what are thoughts? Like he thinks, okay, which cluster it should go? Um, you know, is a production, dev, prod, or in, you know, um, in Virginia, LA, where, um, where they should go? Uh, which, um, what data store the VM should go? Um, what kind of, uh, you know, performance it needs? Uh, is it T1, T2, you know, SSD? Uh, if you have a different category? Uh, that's a storage policy. Talks up all about the data store. <laughs> then the network, like uh, which uh, network uh, villain it goes, you know, which uh, what kind of access it should have. So that's those are like UCS the network policy, IP address assignment, and then service info, right? You know, um, naming, uh, okay, a domain name, uh, time zone, DNS, blah, and many other things. And those um, uh, probably. Um, needs to be configured uh, on the VM. So these are um, service delivery. And also, um, yeah, and then you kind of add them to the VDC. You add them together and make the VDC and on top of that, add your cost models and, um, you know, user level of access, those kind of thing. And then you publish to the catalog. Um, so let's talk about the policies now um, for ECS director. Uh, it's all about policy uh, for ECS director for PM deployment. So if you see on the, um, if you go to the policies and then, uh, I'm going to show this uh, after this. Uh, this just give you a heads up uh, what you're going to see. Uh, three policy, four policies actually. A network storage computes a service. I don't know what to do from the bottom. Um, first, uh, network policy has explained that what it is and the next few slides will go a bit more details onto those. Uh, so this is competing policy, um, we call it. Um, so this is like, you know, which host, which version, minimum conditions. You can see on the right side, this slide says, okay, uh, if the host has total number of VMs more than this, then don't bother. Or the uh, host has to be, you know, CPU utilization less than this uh, for last one week, or maybe, uh, you know, uh, last 24 hours, something like that. So we could um, go very granular what kind of host you'd like to deploy the next VM to go, and it will be all automated, minimum conditions. And also you can give the options, do you want the user to modify, you know, number of vCPU, min limits, so those kind of thing, resizing, just, and which folder it goes. So um, storage policies, as I said, like all about, you know, the storage is a data store, um, a VMware or the Hyper-V or the KVM, it's not about the SAN. So um, same concept, like where it goes, uh, what kind of minimum conditions, uh, the performance wise, and you have to give the resizing option. Network policies, um, VLAN, IP addresses, you can make a static pool in the UCS director and it can pull the information from there. Or if you have a DHCP server, if it is a VDA environment, if you have a DHCP server, that will also work. Uh, you can integrate with Infoblox. Uh, it's not out of the box, but if you go into the um, UCSD forum, uh, you can download that you know workflow from there. Uh, it's called UCSD Workflow Index. If you search Google, that's the first hit, and the search for Infoblox, and you can get many other things from there. Actually, this is a good repository for all the custom you know task that's not available out of the box, and also kind of learning. Service delivery, um, VM name template, um, host name, DNS, time zone, uh, visual admin stuff. 
and there is a macro available uh, you can use that you can see that uh, you know a dollar sign and then VM name so there is a uh, if you search Cisco uh, macro UCSD macro you'll see a kind of document that kind of let you know that what are the your know, variables you can use um, plus more next comes you've made the policies good now you're going to VDC concept in VDC you're going to add those policies and then on top of they'll add a few things like you know who has access to those policies and what is the cost like do you want to add a cost model to that like you know maybe if it um, parse you know usage you'd like to put some cost there you can make a cost policy and add to that and a few other stuff so if you see kind of um, a holistic view uh, how the entire process working um, so start uh, vdc concept is very important to understand you know it can be very confusing i realize because we use vdc for nexus this other stuff where is the vdc here um, you add on the ECS um, director your virtualization uh, compute network storage and then you made the policies based on that you know um, network storage service delivery and then you um, make different vdc's now you can have mix and match the policies and then make the vdc's uh, so you have to kind of realize that um, on the vdc you allow users if they have access to or not if and then next stage is publish that to the user you can publish um, a you know vdc to the catalog and if that user doesn't have access to that vdc he won't be able to provision so this is the relationship you, you need to kind of uh, undo the, uh, your design phase you need to uh, make this understanding that who should need access to which devices and how uh, this should be configured the policies and then you can uh, make the devices and then go for, for the uh, catalogs so as i say like it's um, logical constructs that combines group uh, the level of user access which cloud and approver if you want any um, policies the policies we just talked about and self-service options this is like something what level of accent, uh, access the user should have like say should they have um, shutdown vm should they have resize and there are a big list of things and you just made a policy and tick 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 uh, which one you want and attach to the vdc so after he logs in on the vm portal uh, that will the options he will available uh, there uh, and then if also there's an option for delete after inactivity vm this is interesting concept like so uh, i think i talked about before um if the vm is leased for again there's a concept of leasing for each vm uh, say for two weeks so if the user doesn't need for after two weeks um, it'll send a notification that hey your vm is going to be you know expired and it's going to shut down and if he doesn't respond or he doesn't do anything it's going to shut down on the day of the is expire and then it's take starts the inactive timer and uh, you can set a timer like so maybe after um, 90 days this inactive vm will be deleted from the data store so um, this is um, again it doesn't work means straight away if you don't enable another option on the in a system task so i'll show you that uh, but this is an interesting concept and uh, i'm not sure how many people use it but uh, there is an option to do that okay now catalogs same it's very in simple thing like there's some way you need to give the users to access to that that's the catalog you do that so make a catalog publish to the user and then you know I think you've seen in the second presentation that um, user can come in and kind of request it for a Red Hat um, server and it gets deployed and standard one is the one we talked about right until now you know VM deployment advanced is the workflow and then customize uh, this uh, workflow is can be very very complex to very simple uh, again, we'd cover in the next session the basic workflow and then there goes the advanced workflow and before that we'll cover BMA uh, So Cataloging and then they try to make is this one to make this concept together um, I think it is helpful. It helped me in the initial stage. Uh, let's see if that works for you So you have a data center on the right side 
and you have a user group and you'd like them to consume the resources from the data store so um, you add those accounts that we, I kind of showed virtual account physical accounts um, VMware in this case uh, maybe physical accounts like your ECS um, NetApp EMC um, Nexus switches then you make the policies um, you know network compete storage search delivery from there you make the VDCs and in the VDCs you connect them together you know the accounts um, virtual accounts user group and the policies I hope this makes clear um, and yeah, it is, does it pretty good. And then from there, you make the catalog. Now, catalog is ac connected to the virtual account. Yeah, it can be confusing, this part. And then um, a service request, like from the catalog, when the user requests something, there is a service request created immediately. And that from that first service request, you can see you know what's happening. Again, I kind of gave a demonstration on the second session that how this uh, you know service request shows step by step what's happening on the system and uh, user can track that and if he sees that okay it stops an approval he knows that okay it's kind of stuck there uh, he can chase that so uh, service request is very very helpful for troubleshooting and if something doesn't work there's a extensive log available um, the your the things that is done by the UCS director uh, on the fly that's also you can see there so for example if um, there is a uh, zoning created on the ne your um, sand switch and you try to figure out you know it's in the workflow the what zone name uh, sorry this is not about vm but probably um, again for the vm name what name is there what's the ip address of the vm uh, all it should be find out from that you know service request uh, we'll go into detail on that later, but this is kind of a, a diagram um, I'm seeing for a long time, try to make the concept clear for UCSD, how the different things work together. That's all. Now, I'll go into the demo. Before that, I'll pause the recording. So, um, before you start doing it even, like, um, probably it's a good idea to kind of put in papers like, you know, uh, the VM you're going to deploy for which group? And um, this is going to be for, you know, what um, cluster it should be there, what should be the IP address scheming, a scheme, what, uh, which data store it should go. Uh, once you know all the stuff, then you go to the policies tab and then virtual, and then start, so let's start from the networking. It doesn't matter which way you start. And you can see there is already one created, VLAN 1830. We're going to use this extensive, this is a lab environment. Um, in production, it will be different probably, but um, this lab, we pretty much use everything for this VLAN. Um, and then you add a network policy, say for broad Citrix network policy. And the which cloud it goes, so VCAP 2.0. Um, I'm not sure you want to do that uh, and then you can add um, network cards like the way you add to the VMs it doesn't matter what you actually write here just for you know understanding you can write it zero uh, these are options you have available um, copy adapter from the template allow Windows to override IP addresses and what type of adapter you would use for the VM so this get VM NIC, VMX net 3 and then uh, you have already you added the vCenter here, so you would like to map that port group. Uh, you need to know that which VLAN, the one you're talking about, uh, you want to give access. So it's 1830. And you can give the option DHCP. If you put DHCP, then once the VM comes up, just get the IP address from the DHCP server and go from there. Uh, if you put static means then you have the option to put the IP address here static pool like if you put the Mars cursor here you can see the gives a hints that what how should you, you should not type 192.168.0.1 dash um, you know 50 no you have to enter one so uh, 192.168.0.1 dash blah blah 
the one that thing and the submit mask also there's a very helpful thing here uh, you could do that or you could um, static pull policy so for that you have to make the policy uh, static pull uh, before you do that so then you select um, we have already something here so for the VMs uh, we would um, select anything a 1830 submit so network card one is done if you want multiple you can add multiple of them that's Ethernet zero zero. So you can add more cards here. Pretty straightforward, right? And this one is already in uh, use. So let's have a look. Um, uh, if you go, you can edit this stuff anytime. So which port group he has selected? This one. Same one, I would think. Yep. And then if you go uh, pull, this is the pull he has selected, uh, 50 to 62, 50 to 62, okay. All right, um, network policy is done uh, for VMO environment. Oh, so the static pull probably I can show you here. You can add the static pull here. So you can make also you can access give to the user group which user group have access to that and pretty straightforward you can add the uh, pulls um, pull submit mask gateway villain and uh, there are many other things here. Um, global IP pool usage. This is one of the very useful one. So if you have in the test environment, you deployed some VM and this got the IP address, it didn't release that, you know, because you can't use that IP address again. So you can check that who has got what IP here. Um, this, for troubleshooting, this helped me a lot. So you can say, okay, this is the one and why does it use? You can exactly know that why, uh, who is using this IP address. And this is not only for the pool, this is pretty much the entire one. Okay, uh, next is um, storage. Storage policy is again focused on your data store. Uh, you can have multiple um, your storage policy into one catalog. So um, this is catalog means maybe you have three policies in one card like but the same thing like you know just you can add three of them here so uh, let's make a, a VMware storage policy so again test um, storage policy Cloud name, you select the cloud, link clone, uh, if you want to make a storage profile, uh, data store. Now this part is important. Um, there's a concept of also, uh, if you're a VM, VMware admin, you know that there's a concept of data store cluster. It's very useful and recommended if you can do that. Like So if you select just the data store cluster, then you don't have to modify or add the data to any new data store comes in. So maybe um, data store ABC makes one cluster. So you just add the cluster here, and then once the new data store comes in, you add to the cluster, it kind of op automatically populates when the you know, system task runs. But if you just select the data store, then you have to select the data store um, manually. So if a new data store comes, you have to add it here again. So um, again, before you go into deployment, you need to know that which uh, data store you should use for your um, your this one. So let's just take this one for now. Um, then you can say use look at all of them 
anyone anyone actually and then minimum condition this is uh, quite interesting so data store capacity is be equal to how much gigabyte provisioning space data store provisioning um space less than or equal uh, than free space that can be important you know how much free space that the data store should have before you can you know deploy that and also um yeah over a template that allow resizing option and they're very useful thing like um, or did I do wrong okay sorry I take this one but I didn't put anything here okay okay so um, you can see what is the disk size you want to give so you can put those uh, numbers here and it'll show you a drop down list that okay what size you want um, okay and then there is another thing is called um, you can have different uh, disk so this is for if the user want to add one more um, disk then if it is selecting on the which type of disk you can kind of put him in a different you know um, your policy uh, to for by default all the policies are same but you could make it different if you want to Next comes your um, computing. Let's put a pause and then I'll just probably stop the, my mail. All right, uh, next comes the computing policy. So um, to virtual computing. A VMware, I mean, you can do is whatever the technology you're working on, um, so add. cloud same thing now we're talking about competing now everything about host and cluster so probably it makes sense to include the cluster rather than the host then you select the cluster which cluster so they have only one cluster blade center blade cluster and then you can do all those in you know, a cool stuff resource if you have a resource pool you can add it here uh, remember that if you do that it's going to stick to that in you know, a resource pool so uh, be careful once uh, what you kind of take here yes it's version yep um, and then the same minimum conditions here there are a lot of minimum conditions here cpu usage memory usage and you know less than equal <laughs> resizing same options and permitted value of memories uh, cpu and memory and also if you want to put certain folder you can put it here uh, so maybe test and then you can put you know second level down test one something like that so if it is there is there if it is not there it will create for you submit so the three policies done now we're jumping into the VDC stage so service delivery sorry let's go to the service delivery before that mm. okay you can see they have made uh, different service delivery policy here so before I go into service delivery I would like to show you one thing is uh, so if you search this macro uh, this is uh, a useful document that I find you know if you want to put um, some kind of variable name um, what you can use um, on top of the custom variables um, SRIDs um, VM names so you could you know use the cloud name group name user SRID comments cost center um, and the workflow it's more extensive so app code do you remember this one app code you can put anything there and put in the variables <coughs> so if you add try to add something so like again test SD uh, this is a by default kind of recommendation okay this is what you do uh, 
you can put change anything. Uh, so if it's a group name, SR ID, so it's unique. You can do there's a dollar sign. Uh, it's a variable. Um, uh, it'll be pulled from the once it is kind of uh, executed. Uh, you can put also validation, like you know if the naming should be conformed to a certain standard. If empty name provided by end user is taken as the VM name. So if you don't give anything, end user can give whatever he wants. Um, end user uh, VM name or VM prefix. Uh, and the host template is same as the VM name. Uh, validation, same thing. And now here you put the time zone. Uh, if it is for Linux time zone. Um, boot time, wait, DNS, those kind of stuff. Now if the image uh, type is Windows, then a bit more things pop up here. Um, usually Windows stuff, you know, licensing, you can have a licensing policy. Um, and then, you know, what kind of licensing mode uh, users and uh, your admin login password, domain name, uh, it will add to the domain. Uh, so you probably need to give and the username, of course, the one you give here must have access to the, you know, must have permission to add to the domain. I'll just put Linux to make it simple. And DNS domain name, test.com. So all the policy is done. Uh, now the VDC, we do it from the same place. So virtual data center. What kind of um, cloud it is, VMware cloud, submit. And then you give a VDC name, maybe um, production uh, Red Hat. Um, 7.0 or whatever. Uh, VDC lock means no one can use this VDC. You kind of doing it and you're not sure, uh, probably in the test phase, so just you can keep it locked. Now, you bind that VDC group to a user group. This is important, and it can be integrated with the uh, LDAP. So in my, I think, second session, I showed how to integrate, I think third session, uh, how to integrate with the LDAP. So you can have a security group, and or this is a local one, but you could do also to the LDAP and cloud name, which cloud it is. And then you can add the first level or second level approver. This is not mandatory, but you can add someone and there'll be email will be go to them and uh, you need to you know they need to approve it second level also um approval required from all users or just one person should be good enough so uh, reminders uh, notification email you can add that somebody will get um, maybe your you know, um, your operations should get a notification here is the policies you add them together right um, system policy the one i did is test sd um Competing policy, test, networking policy. Uh, I'm not going to execute it. Um, I gave some name. Oh, yeah, production. Citrix net policy, that's one I gave. And then storage policy, test storage policy. You can also do ISO image mapping, but in this case, we're going to do for VM template based. Cost model, this is a nice um, feature. So there is already a cost model, and I'll probably go back um, after this one. So um, you could put a cost model and attach to that. So when the user requests a VM, so it'll calculate based on the policy that how much they'll cost for the time it's kind of leased. You can also disable, it might be nice not to show them or you don't care. Uh, user action policy, what you can do, um, VM management policy. Um, again, these are the policies I'll show you and um, end user policy is very, very important. It means how much access you want to give him um, if you don't care like if you have um, just user goes it's a linux box it goes to the ssh they don't care about the portal of so that will not apply here apply to them this is for the only the uh, your portal of the ucs director so um pretty much everything is done and we're waiting to publish that uh, before doing that let's do 
we'll get something else. So um, I was talking about cost model, right? Um, so let's start from cost model right here. So you can, there is uh, one cost model here. Let's have a look at that. So um, goes in the cost model type standard, or you can write some, you know, custom customize that hourly or daily, weekly, monthly, and then you can put the number here. Somebody put thousand dollar for one time cost. Yeah. Um, yeah, it can be a bit challenging. You can take reference from the AWS cost modeling or you know Azure. Um, some customer just does show back, just show them okay how much it might cost. They might not charge. Some of them charge it. You know, I've seen. They'll take this information, um, you know, send it to the accounting, and then they will get the money back. Uh, there is option to get it straight from here. I have not seen anyone using it. Um, you know, there's a payment gateway, but uh, mainly for a showback, or you can make a report end of the month, and then uh, send it for uh, recovery. So uh, that's the your cost model. OS license. That's what I was talking about. You could have uh, Windows licensing here, added here. And then you can use this licensing model uh, in the policy. Uh, then comes um, end user self service policy. This is um, so if you try to add um, what type of cloud is that? This uh, VMware in this case, submit. Now it gives you all the options. This is again just applicable to the portal, user portal. Once you log into the um, you know UCSD user portal, that will be you know controlling these features. What will be exposed to them? So you can take take uh, whatever you want them to do and whatever you don't want to do them, and then um, this will be kind of they'll see that on their uh, portal uh, of UCSD portal once they logs in and select the VM. Uh, also, you can see the ISO image mapping. You can do it here. Um, yeah, that's storage licensing. Okay. So um, we have done those things. Now we need to publish it um, to the user. So again, there is two things. One is you publish. The users can see that. You have done the VDC to the, the tenant. Uh, they'll not be able to see it. Uh, the catalog they'll see. But if they don't have access to the VDC, then they can't deploy it. So um, cataloging. Add. Now we can have uh, different folders, and this will be kind of uh, showed in the uh, user. So what kind of catalog? There is a standard catalog, service kind of bare metal. Okay. Um, standard catalog is the one we are doing right now, just for VM deployment. Uh, advanced is the workflow. Um, we'll go next. Uh, then the service container. There's a concept of service container in the UCS director. Like you know, you can have three tier application. You know, web app. Uh, database and then the user have only access to the uh, web maybe port 80 and they are in a container so um, user cannot access to the database or application server straight they just go to the web um, your application uh, web server and the web server talks to the app server app server talks to the database server they can talk to each other and you can define who can talk to whom that service container and the bare metal is just bare metal this is for a bare metal uh, Standard um, submit. So we can give it a name. Uh, test um, RHEL six. Oh, I think I wrote seven point zero. Whatever. So the icon it just shows the icon here. It's nothing. It doesn't. Linux. Okay, you can give this to all users possible, you know, everyone here, or you can choose uh, that which group should have access to that demo tenant. Support contact mail, we'll send an email to them. Uh, now this is the VCAP cloud name. Now here you will need that um, either ISO or, you know, there should be a template there. Uh, once you choose a template, probably just a good 
thing to keep in mind that mm, you could have uh, two layers. One is just deploy a plain vanilla your OS, and then you can run the script on top of that to you know modify that. Maybe you'd like to install um, uh, some kind of web services or maybe a MySQL uh, server database. You can run that through the script, and that script you can pull uh, to this catalog. I'll show you here, but that will need a workflow. So maybe I just that 6.6 this is category it kind of you know defines what kind of category is general VM or you can put um, this for the statistics purpose um, specific operating system under okay specify application if there is any of them here say Apache web server application code this one I mentioned before so you can put a code here um, and then you can use this as a variable for the naming so if you want the VM name should something you like you can put it here and then add it in the you know you know uh, macro for the VM name uh, instead of that you know um, dollar sign that code uh, group name you could use App code also. Credentials, yeah, normally they would know that. You don't want to send them the, you know, username password. Uh, customization, yep, and then post provisioning custom action. This is what I was talking about. Like, so if you have a workflow which we'll cover later, which does run a script on the VM. Sorry, the sensor kicked in, um, kind of switched up the light. So um, virtual storage category, the one um, I showed earlier, uh, you could have the cost computation right over here. Uh, if there is no cost policy, this will kick in. And also you can put a list time here. I didn't use a list time or you can just put, okay, you don't care how much they want. You just give them two weeks. Uh, provisioning later and also there's an option for the end user the provision later uh, not at that time maybe tomorrow or midnight something like that so you can also hide that and you could have different type of access web access um, um, VMRC standard one RDP uh, it'll just send a link to the user say that okay click that and it's going to go to 3389 port uh, web access um, yep yeah, uh, those kind of what about the usual stuff you use you'd probably use it here and once done it is submitted once it is submitted then it is available to the user now let's try to log in as a user and see how does it look like um, I'll pause the recording and go there okay here um, I think I got a user called user one This looks a bit fancy because this HTML5, uh, the next version of the UCS director would support uh, HTML5 for admin also. So uh, there'll be probably similar GUI, I would think, similar to this. So there is a, I kind of went through this one in the second uh, lecture, so uh, second session. So you can probably go over and uh, kind of know a bit more about this interface here. Uh, so RHEL, um, so where is R1? UCS detached test RSL 7.0. So this is the one we created. So if you go um, and then these are the options available. This is for the user or the group and then catalog type. Standard, you cannot change it, the catalog, this one. Uh, perform deployment, assume it'll check that if you can do that, like maybe a resource is not available, those kind of thing. Production uh, on the VDC. Now this can be a bit tricky. Like you have a number of VDCs available, which one you choose. Um, so this one is this is my one, but you can choose the other one also. And then I put a comments. Like this comments will be shown to the approver. Okay, this is the reason. Make it quick or whatever. Uh, provision now or later. And then the you know cost computation. Uh, these things you can hide from the users list time um, 
so comments you can put and list time is like one maybe normally I put two hours during the testing phase so it kind of delays that as soon as it's done you can also choose the you know, options how many CPU how many how much memory you need um, also hard disk one you can customize the stuffs you might not want to see them and there's a cost it is showing you know based on that you know so information we got this much it'll cost him um the store for this card disk one all right uh, let's do some troubleshooting here um uh, so it says that um allocate say, okay same data store for all disk enable but it asks me to select a data store so if you do and do something and you try to modify that it comes up with a message say there's no data store available for this policy so this is a lab and we try to do quickly a policy that policy didn't have any available data store now let's go back to the admin portal and see what's happening there so this is the storage policy we created remember so if i go here and see the data store data store 1.2 this one is is off this is not available right now so that's the reason it kind of bombed out say that okay hey there's this data store is not available so you have to know that which <coughs> data store has access to that. So you can select the data store and then you should probably, you know, do the uh, provision the your uh, VM. Now, um, I went through the I mean, deployment of the VM in the second your lesson, uh, your session. So I would kind of highly recommend that uh, you can go over and check that. Uh, so you know that how the VM provisioning works. And the, I just covered the admin part today. So how this work. And once this is there, so you can say, um, as I mentioning about the end user policy, and this is applicable here. I hope there is some VM here. Um, VM. Yeah. So there is one VM here. And if you select that, then you have the options here. You know, configure list time, resize VMs, launch VM client, uh, view detail create snapshot and more actions this came from the end user policy so that's all i'll probably um, stop here um, and the next one i'm going to cover the basic workflow which is probably the interesting part and most powerful thing on the ucs director and i hope it's well, it was useful and um, put your comments if you have any thanks